Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, hour two. Greetings, conversationalists. I hope you're having a great Friday. The phone number, 877-973-7425. It is Eric Erickson here. And believe it or not, because I'm very thoughtful and original, the show is the Eric Erickson Show. <laughs> I, I, look, um, I, I got more to say, including how to, to the candidate should go, but it is an open line Friday. I would be remiss if I didn't let you guys chime in on what you're thinking as well. Uh, I can hear Ken in the other room say, no, <laughs> the phone number 877-973-7425. Uh, let me begin with JT. You're going to be up next. Welcome. Hi. Hi, Eric. Good to talk to you. Um, my conflict that I've had is always trying to – why are they, the Democrats, trying to destroy Donald Trump while at the same time they want him to be the nominee? And my conclusion is that they just want to piss off – I think I can say that word – enough Republican voters to vote for him in the primary and give him the nomination that, because he's the only Republican that Biden can beat. So they really only need, I think, 5 to 10 percent, and this is in the primary – to get him the nomination, and he probably already got that if it can hold, and they're going to try to make it hold by keeping indicting, Look, keep indicting him. You, you say that, and I'm sure there will be people who scoff at this, but the reality is, uh, I mean, just take Georgia. Brian Kemp, the governor of the state, has released some polling today, um, shows him uh, way more popular than anybody else in the state, including John Ossoff, his potential rival in 2026, but also shows that a generic Republican would curb stomp Joe Biden in Georgia, but Donald Trump would lose to him. Basically, any Republican will beat Joe Biden in Georgia, except Donald Trump, according to this polling. Uh, and, and it Agreed. is true. I mean, Trump, you can say he stole it, but for those of us who live in the real world, uh, Joe Biden won Arizona, he won Nevada, he won Georgia, he won Pennsylvania, he won Wisconsin, he won Michigan. How does Trump add numbers back to win those states? Uh, and, and if he can't, then he loses again. And surely there are some Trump supporters who would rather go down on the sinking ship with Trump than pick someone else. But are most Republicans in a suicide pact to give Joe Biden a second term? Uh, I do think that part of the Democratic calculus here is this rallies Republicans to Trump, and that's good for them, the Democrats, because it alienates independent voters in the general election. And that's something Republicans, they've got to, they've got to set a motion aside on this. I don't know whether they will or not. Still have a lot of people who are epistemically convinced the election was stolen in 2020. And if so, Donald Trump couldn't stop the steal, couldn't stop the indictment. Can he stop the deep state in 2024? There's the other side of the coin on that one. Ricky, you're going to be up next. Welcome to the show. Hey, Eric. How you doing? Great. How are you? Oh, best day of my life. I mean, you spot you spot on. You know, and I, I tell people all the time, you know, this man ain't killed nobody. Okay. And. I, I've said you will not imprison a former president of either party in this country. You, you're just not going to do that. I was wrong about the indictment, but you will not imprison a former president. I mean, it's it's it's, it's crazy that th this thing is going on. I mean, because if they had put that man behind bars, get you a bag of popcorn and sit and watch the circus because it's coming. And that don't mean it's right, but it's coming. Yeah. And it's it's it's. it's and, and as I told them this morning, let the games begin. Because the way they play that game in Washington, you come after mine, I'm coming after yours, and we can already see it happening. So Biden and every Democrat, if they got any skeletons, they better bury them very deep because they're coming for them. They are. Amen, Ricky. You're right. Yeah, appreciate the phone call. 877-973-7425. This crosses the Rubicon. This sets a dangerous precedent in this country for everyone, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. Uh, Hubert, you are going to be the next caller. Welcome. 
Eric, good morning. Good evening. Hi there. I think what you just said a while ago about the issue that's involved should be heard by every single American because what you say is true. This is a real issue. I don't think it's against uh, uh, for justice. It's just uh, uh, against Donald Trump. No, I, I'm not saying I'm for or against him, even though I vote for him twice. But America cannot speak about other countries that are at corrupt government because they are doing it now in a subtle way. So I don't think that they, they, uh, what they're trying to do is not get him elected. And so they're going to use any dirty trick. It's not against, it's not about justice. No, justice is not involved here. It's just that they're against him and they're doing their dirt, dirty trick. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that's right. I'm, I'm annoyed. And what you said a while ago, the issue is really true. And I think every American, you should repeat it again. Repeat what you said before. Summarize it. Oh. So, that every, even, so that everyone could hear. Oh, okay. So this is the problem. Uh, once it comes out of my mouth, I can't remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I'll then play the recording so you can hear it. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, you know, I, I'm, I am going to take that last monologue and I'm going to push it out to all the email subscribers for it. But you know, you know, Herbert, that's a dangerous thing. Uh, thank you for the phone call, uh, Hubert. The I, whatever my monologues, when they come out, they're gone. They're into the ether. They're into the wind. They're out of my head. Uh, my old boss, uh, Pete Briggs, notoriously would text me or email or call me after I did a monologue that he really liked. He said that was fantastic. See, I have no idea what you're talking about. But it, the the point I think it, it, of of this is it, it, this crosses the Rubicon. You should beat him at the ballot box if you really think he's that bad. Beat him at the ballot box, uh, and that resolves the issue because everyone believes everybody I encounter. Even the people who are regularly on social media or don't watch the news, everyone seems to have this gut-level feeling that something's not right in the country. People are at each other's throats. This amplifies that as opposed to de-escalating the situation. Beat him at the ballot box, you've de-escalated the situation. But what about the other Republicans? There are 10 Republicans running, one of them Donald Trump. What about the other nine? Hear me out on this. I think there are three strategies. One strategy is probably what Chris Christie will do, and that's to come out and say, folks, the man has no impulse control. Of course he broke this law. Whether he goes to jail or not is a different issue, but he lacks the impulse control. He did this. He gets what he deserves. And by the way, he probably did break the law. You do need to come to terms with this based on what we know so far he probably did. Whether he should go to jail, whether he should be prosecuted, not everyone who breaks the law gets prosecuted. You speed. You don't go. You don't get prosecuted every time you speed. But he probably he's got no impulse control. That's probably it. But that's not going to work in a Republican primary. The one that will work the best. Hear me out on this. Here's the strategy that the other candidates should probably use, and that's to come out and say something like this: I want to thank Donald Trump. He beat Hillary Clinton, and the Democrats have relentlessly tried to beat him ever since for beating Hillary Clinton. The woman they can't acknowledge ran a terrible campaign for president. Donald Trump, thank you for what you did for the country. Thank you for taking out Kasim Soleimani. Thank you for moving our embassy back to Jerusalem. Thank you for having the backs of our military. Thank you for not starting wars while you were president. Thank you for cutting taxes on Americans and revitalizing our economy. But, sir, you can't continue. Let me continue the fight. The reality is Donald Trump is going to be indicted in Georgia. He's already indicted in New York. He's indicted in Miami. He's probably going to be indicted in Washington. These people have metaphorically shackled him to a courtroom so that they can shackle him for real in jail. And that means he can't campaign for president of the United States. All of his money will go to lawyers. All of his time will go to court and deposition and law firms. He can't run. I can. Let me beat Biden. And then the media comes and says, well, sir, if you get elected, will you pardon him? And you smile a little bit with a twinkle in your eye and you say, elect me and find out. So you give Trump his due, you praise him for what he did in office, and you point out that he there's no way he can run an effective campaign for president. You can't beat Joe Biden in court and on the campaign trail. You got to pick and Donald Trump can't pick. He's got to beat him in the courtroom. 
There is a third option, too. And the third option may also be the Chris Christie or Mike Pence option or something like that. And that's to say he couldn't stop the steal. He couldn't stop the indictment. He sure as hell can't stop the deep state. Might as well let somebody else give it a try. And and you 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 do it as a, a pejoratively, if you will, against Donald Trump. You say, look, he said the election was stolen in 2020. He couldn't stop it. He said he did nothing wrong and he can't stop an indictment. So how do you think he's going to stop Joe Biden? We must stop Joe Biden. You may want to sink with this ship. I say let somebody else try and see if somebody else can beat Joe Biden. I think those are the three avenues. I think the second one is best. You praise Donald Trump for what he did in office, and then you say, folks, he can't possibly beat Joe Biden on the campaign trail when he's got to beat Joe Biden in court. Whether Donald Trump realizes it or not, he's got to step aside and let someone else do it. Donald Trump needs to go so that we can beat Joe Biden. We hate it. We think it's ridiculous. We will avenge him. But that is the reality. He's got to fight a criminal case in New York. He's got to fight a criminal case in Miami. He is going to have to fight a criminal case in Fulton County, Georgia. He's probably going to have to fight a criminal case in Washington, D.C. related to January 6th. They're just going to keep throwing indictments at him. The only way to make it go away is to get out of the race and not run again. The longer Donald Trump stays in, the more indictments come. The more indictments come, the more money he spends on lawyers, not on campaign visits. You can say it's unfair. You can say it's a Democratic ploy, but you can't deny the reality that it's happening. And the best thing Donald Trump could do is step aside, let somebody else beat Joe Biden, and let that person pardon him. That's probably what he should do. But I have a hard time believing Donald Trump wants to stop running for president of the United States. His lack of impulse control got him into this, and his lack of impulse control is probably going to get him in jail if the Democrats have their way. That's the problem, and probably not getting back to the White House. Bolin Branch uses the finest 100% organic cotton from family farms to your family home. They've got a natural, unmatched softness. And they get softer with every wash. Those are the highlights that Bull & Branch wants me to tell you about. Let me tell you about my experience as a longtime customer. Every single room in our house has Bull & Branch sheets. Why? Because they don't pill up over time. Uh, You know, some, they they get a little like like pill of whatever they call it, and, and they get rough. They don't. They get softer every single wash, and they last. They don't wear out. You don't have fraying threads. They just are fantastic, and they really, really do get softer the more you wash them, and they hold up over time. We love them in our house. They've got the perfect weight. They feel kind of snuggly, but you don't get hot in the summertime under them, but you stay warm in the wintertime. It's just, it's it's perfect. I love these sheets. Get 15% off your first order of and Brand Sheets when you use promo code ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, at BolandBranch.com, that's BolandBranch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, Branch.com. The promo code is ERIC. Exclusions apply. See site for details. You will love these sheets as much as everybody in my family does. We got them on all five beds in the house. You can too. Greetings and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. Open line Friday, 877-973-7425 to the phones. Matthew, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing well, Eric. How are you doing? I'm great. What's up? I was just curious. How can uh, our former President Trump use his re-election campaign finances and, don- and donations to pay for his criminal defense against these indictments? Aha. Uh-huh. Oh, that's an excellent. Um, so the uh, the Federal Election Commission has ruled in the past that a campaign can use 100 percent of legal expenses related to the campaign uh, for legal fees, whether or not uh, those fees would have occurred had the individual not been a candidate or office holder. Uh, now, the issue is campaign or office holder activities. Since Trump had been president and these actions related to his presidency and end of presidency, that would come under the advisory opinion of the FEC, I think. 
that this would that this would be fine. Uh, the FC, FEC does have general precedents of the past that essentially, if you got legal fees and they are related to because you ran for office, were running for office, and something happened while you were doing so, you get to use those fees. So the, he's pretty on pretty good legal ground here to be able to. But that's part of the problem as well. Uh, every penny you give Donald Trump now is more likely to go to cover the costs of lawyers than to cover the cost of a campaign. Can he win the presidency against Joe Biden? Forget the Republican nomination, because I think all of us can agree he can win the Republican nomination. The question is, can he campaign against Joe Biden when he's got all these legal bills? He's got to pay lawyers in Georgia, in Florida, in Washington, in New York. Maybe not in Washington, maybe not in, in Georgia, but most likely. And that's the problem. Um, it, it's a it's it's going to be difficult for him to mount a presidential campaign, and that's why I think the other Republicans need to say, listen. The man did a lot of good as president, but we got to move on here. It's very clear the Biden administration is going to shackle him in a courtroom, metaphorically speaking. They're going to put anchors on him in court, and every penny you give him is going to go to fight the Biden administration in court. He can't fight the Biden administration in the court of public opinion when he's got to fight him before a court of judges and jury. And some Trump supporters won't be persuaded by that. But I think a lot of them, if you if you praise what Trump did in the past, but you say, guys, seriously, how is he going to beat Biden on the campaign trail? He's got to beat him in court. Let me avenge him for you. Get me elected and, and we can avenge him. I think that's a compelling message for a lot of people, not for everybody. And I do think that there will be some Republicans say, listen, dude couldn't stop the steal, couldn't stop the prosecution. He's not going to be able to beat the deep state. Give somebody else a try. It's a harder case to make because I do think there are a lot of Trump supporters who think if Donald Trump can't win, no one can. It's easier to say, listen, the only reason he can't win is because he's tied up in a courtroom. Let me win on the campaign trail and we'll, we'll avenge him. The one I think Chris Christie's going to do and the one I think Mike Pence is headed towards is um, that, hey, he did it. He's guilty. Guy has no impulse control. He brought this on himself. That's not going to play well in a Republican primary. Play great in the press. Won't play well with the Republican primary. By the way, Mike Pence's statement is out. Mike Pence is calling for them to go on and release the indictment, take it under, take it out from under seal, uh, and release it to the public, show everybody before the weekend what all the evidence is. Uh, part of that evidence, we are led to believe, is that Donald Trump himself is being recorded talking about classified documents that he has in his possession that he acknowledges are classified documents. If the president says that that's kind of the smoking gun because you can't take classified documents to Mar-a-Lago unless you've declassified them, and he claims he did. And if he is, as claimed on record, saying these are classified documents, that's a smoking gun in this case. Whether he should be prosecuted for it is another matter, but it's pretty much a smoking gun if that really does exist, as press reports claim. Now, one of the groups that's out there helping fight the wokes and fight the left and fight the Democrats is Patriot Mobile, and you can help them battle the left just by moving your cell phone service to them. All you have to do is go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric, patriotmobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K. Patriot Mobile takes their profits, grows their profits with your help, and then funds the conservative movement and parents battling wokes on school boards conservative candidates around the country. It's what they do. It's how they're designed. And they give you guaranteed great service. They're using the cell, same cell towers you're probably already using. You can even take your existing phone number to them or get a new phone number from them. Take your existing unlocked phone to them or get a new phone from them. They're just they're a cell phone company. It's what they do. You get guaranteed great service. Go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric today. Click the coverage link. You can put in your home address. Zoom all the way into your house. See how good the 5G, the data, the voice, everything is. On top of that, you can call them. They have 100% U.S.-based customer service. If you don't want to do it on the Internet, you want to do it on phone, call them 972-PATRIOT. Tell them I sent you. You get free activation. They give you great discounts. You're a veteran, a first responder, an NRA member, a teacher. You've got a lot of lines for a lot of kids who need phones. PatriotMobile.com slash Eric or 972-PATRIOT. Tell them I sent you. If you don't follow the link on the phone, tell them I sent you. Get free activation. PatriotMobile.com slash Eric. Greetings across the fruited plain. It's Eric Erickson here. The phone number, 877-973-7425. If you want to be on the show, I actually... 
I will come back to the indictment in the next hour. But there's other stuff we got to talk about too. And I, I need to, I, I, uh, you know, I, I have a way of just alienating every. You know, it's always funny. It's always funny the number of people who say, oh, he's saying this because he can't alienate himself from his radio listeners. Have you ever listened to me on the radio? I'm really good about alienating myself from my listeners. <laughs> I, I, I want to just very briefly uh, say something. Uh, Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel is getting in on Pride Month. Cracker Barrel now has rainbow painted rocking chairs. <laughs> can, can I just, uh, without offending you guys, can I say I, I really don't care? I, I They're probably not doing it in, in every part of the country, probably in, in some areas. Uh, where there are large gay populations, they are, and where there aren't, they aren't doing it, uh, and I don't care. Y'all, whether you agree with it or not, and you know my religious views, you, you know you, you know my stand on these issues, it, gay customers have just as much a right to feel welcome at a Cracker Barrel as a Muslim or an evangelical Christian. Do I get tired of the in-your-face, we, we've co-opted God symbol to Noah and, and all that? Yeah, I do. I, I do. But I also realize it's a big market with a lot of money, and, and why not make everyone feel welcome at your store? The problem is the overcorrection, where if you're a person of faith, you're no longer made to feel welcome during Pride Month. There's nothing wrong with making a gay person feel welcome at a restaurant. There's nothing wrong at all. In fact, you should make everyone feel welcome. The problem is so many corporations go out of their way to alienate Christians and Muslims during Pride Month and make them feel like they're horrendous bigots and not welcome. That's the problem with the Bud Light situation. The Bud Light situation uh, happened to pick the most obnoxious trans activists in America to celebrate, and then their PR marketing person went on television to complain about their com- consumers on how they're a bunch of white, redneck, hillbilly frat boys, and they want to change the image. That was the problem with Bud Light. The problem with Target was they decided to embrace a clothing company that celebrates Satan to make their pride stuff. And it's very in your face. If you acknowledge, you can't escape it. It's like the 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 um, the schools that celebrate Pride Month, where the kids run for the rainbow and wave the flag. This is indoctrination, and that offends many. But saying, "Hey, we got a rainbow rocking chair out front. If you're gay and you're celebrating Pride, you're welcome to sit here, if you want." I, I really that doesn't bother. Now it used to. I will admit it used to more, but I. I I've got gay friends. Most of you know someone who's gay, and I don't have a problem making them feel welcome at a restaurant. I have a problem when you make the Christians feel very much not welcome, and one chair that is rainbow painted I don't think is going to make me feel unwelcome. I may roll my eyes and say, it is a little ridiculous. We got an entire month of this. Um, <laughs> but... There is a backlash brewing. Also, I I do need to say this. I bought the Cracker Barrel rocking chairs for my house, and they are horrible. They are the most uncomfortable chairs. So on Sunday nights, you come to my house for bourbon and cigars on the front porch. Y'all aren't invited. I'm sorry, but you come to my house for bourbon and cigars. You sit on my front porch. I got two comfortable chairs. Philip and I tend to get there first. Well, I get there first because it's my freaking house. I'm there. Philip shows up for everybody else. We get the comfortable chairs. Everybody else sits in the Cracker Barrel because they're terribly uncomfortable rocking chairs. You would at least think if they wanted a pride-themed rocking chair, they'd get a fabulous rocking chair that's like artisanally created somehow. Instead, they got the standard uniform Cracker Barrel chair, and they suck. They are not comfortable rocking chairs, and they don't they, – they they keep well over time, but, I mean, the pain and stuff, I've got the white ones, and they're not comfortable. Right? I am thoroughly disappointed in my Cracker Barrel chairs. They're fine when you're sitting outside 10 minutes waiting to get in line at the Cracker Barrel. You try sitting 30 minutes, they are deeply uncomfortable chairs. 
I just felt the need to get that out of the way. Um, I, however, it, it, I may roll my eyes at the ridiculousness of feeling like you're really doing something by painting a pride flag on a chair saying we're celebrating Pride Month with our gay friends. But I really, it, I at this point, we're, we're, we're into the 21st century. We're, we're in the world that we're in. And it doesn't put off the Christians. Now, if you did a Hail Satan chair at the Cracker Barrel for Pride Month, that would probably piss me off. Um, But just putting a rainbow on it? No. I mean, let everybody feel a little welcome at Cracker Barrel. The in-your-face nonsense is is the, the, the corporate America going out and declaring themselves all gay for a month is the absurd part of it. That, I mean, really, that is that is the genuinely absurd part of it, of, hey, we're all gay this month. Our, our corporations will return to being straight next month. It's just ridiculous. Um, oh, well, I wanted to get away from the topic, and now I cannot. Um, the federal indictment of the former president, uh, Donald Trump, and his associate, Walt Nauta, has now been unsealed. We will wait for others to get the indictment and review it so that I can see it because I'm talking to you guys right now. So we'll wait a few minutes. I can go and transition to the um, point I wanted to make on the Cracker Barrel stuff and the Target and the Bud Light stuff. Gallup has polling. And the Gallup polling shows a major shift in this country. More people consider themselves social conservatives now than at any time since 2012. More people consider themselves fiscal conservative now than at any time since 2012. But there's another interesting data point, and this is from, uh, uh, was it, PPI, Public Polling International? It's a pretty credible pollster. More than 50% of Gen Z now says that there are only two genders, male and female. The only category of people who a plurality say there are more than two genders are Democrats, and only 44% of Democrats say that. There is a cultural shift, and this comes as places like Cracker Barrel celebrate pride with their, their rainbow-painted rocking chair. It's the in-your-face Trans mafia that's caused the backlash. When San Francisco has their pride march and it is an entirely hedonistic, demonic affair, you and I don't have to see it. But when local progressives are dragging pedophiles into the local library dressed up as drag queens, and by the way, that happened this week, local pedophile went in as the drag queen to read books to elementary school kids in Texas, yes, the backlash begins. When transgender advocates get you fired for refusing to say there are three genders or four genders or five genders or, or, or five lights, the backlash begins. When Bud Light celebrates Dylan Mulvaney and ridicules its customers, the backlash begins. When Target lets a satanic celebrating clothing company make their pride outfits, including tucking garments for kids, the backlash begins. When the people on CNN lecture you and me about Donald Trump and the truth and can't tell us what a woman is, the backlash begins, and the backlash has begun. And the result is that it is driving a lot of Americans who do not want to fight in the culture war to the right because they know the people on the right are fighting the culture war for them. The backlash has begun. To those of you who are gay and lesbian, this doesn't have anything to do with homosexuality. It has everything to do with queer theory. And you should understand the difference, all of you, regardless of your sexuality. There is a prevailing belief in society, whether you believe it or not, that people are born gay or straight. What the transgender movement wants you to do is to believe everything is a choice. And everything is an object of will. And so you can choose your gender. You can choose your sexuality. You can choose to make yourself in an image of your own choosing, and everyone else must agree. Now, the line is drawn at race. You can't decide you're black. Rachel Dozal showed us that. You can't, you can't identify as black, 
But if you want to identify, if you're a manly man and want to identify as a woman, we're all supposed to believe you. And that strikes everyone as absurd. And the fact that we've gone down this road now has caused a backlash. And it's a backlash that's beginning to show up in polling from Gallup and PPI and and um, and uh, what is it? Uh, P, not PRI, uh, Pew, Pew, that's the one I'm thinking of. It's beginning to show up in all the major polling outfits that have polled on these issues for a long time. 44% of atheists... Interestingly enough, 44% of Democrats and 44% of atheists, those are the only two groups where a plurality believe that there are more than two genders. Every other religious group on the planet says there are only two. Every demographic group, including Gen Z, says there are only two. Majority, over 50%, say there's only two. Only Democrats and atheists. G.K. Chesterton, the philosopher, said the danger of being an atheist is not that you'll believe in nothing, but that you'll believe anything, we see this with this. And the backlash has come. If it was just a hedonistic show in San Francisco the rest of us didn't have to see, if it was a gay day at Disney World we didn't have to show up that day, it was one thing. But when you started bringing drag queens into the local library, putting explicit pornography in the elementary school and then calling us book burners when we wanted them out of the library. You started celebrating transgender activists and firing people who refused to accept anything other than the gender binary. You, the transgender activists of America, have provoked a backlash against you. You could have been humble. You could have allowed us to live and let live. But you decided living and let living isn't right because you're being canceled, and so we must be canceled, and the backlash has begun. You've reaped the whirlwind. It is remarkable. We have a massive, sizable shift of people in this country, tens of millions of people, who now view themselves as socially conservative from 2012 to now, and 100% of it is about the transgender agenda. It's it's not about pride. It's not about people being gay or lesbians. It's about the transgender agenda and how in your face it's been and how bullies they have become and how punitive people in corporate America have become to people who just want to be left alone and say there are men and women and that's it. A cultural backlash. The left for years has told us the inevitable drift to the left was always going to happen. Gen Z was always going to be liberal and progressive. And the transgender movement was just going to be accepted. You might as well come on board now because you're going to die and they're going to be accepted. Not so. The backlash is on. Down to the youngest among us, the backlash is on. And it's all because they overplayed their hand and they bullied everybody. It's a lesson to every other group out there that wants social acceptance. Don't be a bully. Now, when it comes to fighting for small government out there to leave us alone, One of the best groups to do it is Americans for Prosperity, AFP. You can become an activist at Americans for Prosperity by going to americansforprosperity.org slash Eric. You'll see they've got over 30 chapters in the country. What do they do? They teach you how to be an activist. They teach you how to make your arguments. They give you the data to make your arguments. They teach you the best ways to approach your city government, your school board, your state legislature, your national government and how to make the persuasive case for small government. They give you the tools, the facts, and the knowledge to be the best spokesman for small government. What you do is go to americansforprosperity.org slash Eric, and you sign up. You sign up with AFP. You become a great activist, and you become an effective warrior for the conservative cause. It's americansforprosperity.org slash Eric. This group, I've been doing business with them. I've been a partner of theirs since like 2006. They have been unfailingly committed to small government, and they can help you be better as an activist. Americansforprosperity.org slash Eric. When we come back, we now have the indictment. I will review it. I will tell you what's in it. Stand by. Ah, breaking news here, folks. It is Eric Erickson across the nation. Breaking news. Uh, The Justice Department has Donald Trump on tape admitting to showing people without classified clearance secret documents and admitting their secret documents that had not been declassified, which is a violation of federal law. You can say, but Hillary, but Biden, 
he's on tape. Let me read for you these things. This is in the indictment. The classified documents Trump stored in his boxes included information regarding defense and weapons capabilities of both the United States and foreign countries, United States nuclear programs, potential vulnerabilities of the United States and its allies to military attack, and plans for possible retaliation in response to a foreign attack. The unauthorized disclosures of these classified documents could put at risk the national security of the United States, foreign relations, the safety of the United States military, and human sources, and the continued viability of sensitive intelligence collective methods. In June 2021, at Trump National Golf Club in Bedminster, New Jersey, during an audio recorded meeting with a writer, a publisher, and two members of his staff, none of whom possessed a security clearance, Trump showed and described a plan of attack that Trump said was prepared for him by the Department of Defense and a senior military official. Trump told the individuals the plan was, quote, highly confidential and, quote, secret. Trump also said, quote, As president, I could have declassified it. Now I can't, you know, but this is still a secret. In August or September 2021 at the Bedminster Club, Trump showed a representative of his political action committee who did not possess a security clearance, a classified map related to a military operation, and told the representative that he should not be showing it to the representative and that the representative should not get too close. On January 17, 2022, nearly one year after Trump left office and after months of demands by the National Archive and Records Administration for Trump to provide all missing presidential records, Trump provided only 15 boxes, which contained 197 documents with classification markings. On June 3rd, in response to a grand jury subpoena demanding the production of all documents with classification markings, Trump's attorney provided to the FBI 38 more documents with classification markings. you got to listen to this. In response to a grand jury subpoena demanding the production of all documents, they provided 38 more documents. On August 8th, pursuant to a court-ordered search warrant, the FBI recovered 102 more documents. Oh, it's more. It gets worse. 